How to complete a CDA attendance record. Here's an example of what an attendance record looks like. It will have all of the information for one child. One attendance record is to be completed per child in the family. If you have more than one children, please ensure that the parent is signing the correct in and out times for that child. We're going to touch base on each category to go ahead and reflect what needs to be completed, what information is required, and if anything is missing, as a notification that your reimbursement will be held or delayed. So we do want you to double check your attendance record before submitting the original into our Bonita office. Um, one of the things that we do look at is it has to be the original attendance record. No alternate records will be allowed as of January 1st, 2015. So if you're unable to print the attendance record from CARE Portal, uh, please contact your provider specialist or our front desk team so we can better assist you. The first section here is your child's information. It's going to list your name as a provider, the child's name, the parent's name on the program, as well as the child's information date of birth and age. If you see there is a discrepancy here with the child's date of birth or age, please notify the provider specialist so we can assist you with that. Uh, since it is a, um, it will be, a, there will be a difference to the reimbursement based on the age category. The month that you're going to be printed will be listed in bold. This will better help that you catch any errors as well as the child's name in bold to help the parent uh, select the correct attendance record when they're signing in on a daily basis. The main category would be the attendance must be completed daily. This section is now reflecting the full month. It only has to list the time in and out. This is a big change. Please let the parent know they must continue to do this on a daily basis. The time in and time out should be listed to the minute. It should not be rounded out. Uh, so in this case, the example will reflect this looks like a school age child because we're getting the time out and time in section here, which looks like it's reoccurring every day of the week. So we use this as an example. The parent will drop the child off into the provider's home roughly at 7 a.m. Provider will log the child out for school, log them back in, and then the parent will sign out in the evening. If there are any absences or any changes to the child's schedule, we require that you list them under the comments section, as well as if you are a licensed provider and request reimbursement for any absences, you will list that under the comments section as well. If the child is absent, for example, here the parent listed the child is with grandmother. So you would make certain that the parent complete this on a daily basis till the end of the month. Once that section is done, uh, you as a provider, you should have already reflected on the family fee certification and receipt section. Uh, the rule is that the parent should pay you the family fees at the beginning of the month if they are assessed any family fees. In this case, we do see that the part-time monthly fee is listed as $42 for the month. There is no fee under full time, so this is letting us know that the parent is approved under 130 hours, which does go side by side with the child being school age and not using more than 130 in the month. If this were a child that is in the provider's home all day or daycare all day, then we would look at if it's uh, over 130 hours in the month, then you would just see the full-time monthly fee assessed here, which would be most likely double the amount of part-time, and that will reflect $84. So if you do see any amount listed here on this section, please make certain that the parent pay you the family fee at the beginning of the month. In this case, we're using January as an example. So the family should be paying you $42 for the month of January by January 1st or the 2nd. Provider billing and invoicing. So the provider must enter the total amount billed for the current month only. Uh, so please do not deduct any additional fees, any co-payments. Um, if there is a registration or materials fee, you would list that separately here on this line. If you are a provider that has a monthly billing um, rate sheet, then you go ahead and just enter one amount here. This is either a monthly or if you select the weekly rates, you'll go ahead and let us know what you would charge for this family based on your rate sheet submitted 
and based on your uh, rules of billing or invoicing. In this case we give you the space for six weeks. The reason that we list six weeks or six lines is because each month has different weeks that are uh, billable. The billable week for child care under CDA's rule is we count a child care week as Sunday through Saturday. We did use the month of January as an example and if you review January 1st calendar it's not a full week Sunday through Saturday. Uh, so in this case we went ahead and prorated the 180 into the week and we gave an average of 72. However you would follow your own billing rules. In this case we selected January and there are five billable weeks due to the Sunday through Saturday week. If you do have any questions regarding billing or invoicing, our Department and Provider Services is unable to coach or assist as to how you should bill. And this is something that you would have to calculate and you would bill us based on how you would charge any non-subsidized family. The next section is the self-certification. This is where the parent and the provider must sign under penalty of perjury that all of the information is true and correct. This is a required signature field. If any of the two signatures are missing, we will also hold reimbursement and there is a possibility the parent and or provider will have to come in person to fill this out. So please double check your work before submitting your attendance record. Um, if you do have any questions regarding reimbursement or how to complete the attendance record, please contact your provider specialist.